Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I put out new videos three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And thanks so much if you are coming back and welcome if you are new. So this is a, I think a mid-century modern home that I found the inspiration for on the web. And I will post a link in the description box if you want to see the actual home. And I really like the front of it, but that's about the only part that's really similar. There is going to be a little guest house, and that wasn't part of the plan at all. And I built it on this little lot in Windenburg. It's part of the island, but there really wasn't enough space. So eventually, you'll see that it has been moved to the 64 by 64 tile lot. And that gave me plenty of space to move the guest house to the side and you know, add a little more landscaping in the back. I think that was a good decision. Now, I want to apologize in advance for everyone who has to listen to this video, my previous video, and possibly a few more after this. With this terrible sound, I don't have a microphone yet. I have ordered one, but you know, to the situation that's going on, it's gonna take a little bit to get here but I'm hoping that sound quality will improve vastly as far as my voiceovers go. Because listening to this myself, yeah, I would get so irritated if I had to hear that in every one of my videos from now until whenever I stop posting. <laughs> so please bear with me, there will be better sound coming soon. Like many other people, I am not a big fan of roofing, but I think modern houses, mid-century modern, anything but you know, classic type houses, I find that those are easier to roof for just because no one really expects you to do something traditional as far as the roof goes. And this one was made even simpler because I did have a photo to reference from. Now, I don't quite remember what the actual roof style looked like. I don't even remember if it showed the whole roof, but the front part of it was pretty easy to emulate, so that was a big help. And you'll notice later on in the build that I was finally able to find these, what do you call those? Solar panels. The solar panels in debug mode, and I think that added a little, I don't know, a little more style to the roof. It kind of broke it up from just being a flat black slab. And then I will eventually add uh, skylights to the kitchen on the main house. I always try to do them with the roof pieces, but I always forget how when I start building. Like I know in theory, but when it comes to application, it just completely leaves my brain. And so I was using those, I think it's the crystal clear floor panel that you get with the Island Living Pack and those make great little skylights. And then I just um, surrounded the outside of them with a little low fence to give it some definition. I was really lucky that these Sims had a kind of stone tile that was pretty similar to the photo because I really wanted it to look as similar to the picture as possible as far as the front goes anyway. And I've never really used this type of wood paneling. I'm not a big fan of wood paneling, but I think it looks fine on the outside. But I like the fact that it does break up the rest of the house. And I don't quite remember what color the actual house is now, but I don't think it was this green that I put, but I've always tried to use something different than what I used in a previous build. And I don't think I've used this green panel before, but I think it looks nice with the wood and stone combination that I had.
Right now I'm trying to see how I want that little guest house moved. I think it's a bit too close uh, to the other house in order for me to put a pool there that you know looks big enough for several sims to be in at the same time. And if you can't tell, I've moved it to a bigger lot on the island. It's the 64 by 64 tile lot and that gave me plenty of space to move the guest house further away from the main house and extra space in the back to do what I wanted with it. Now, there weren't any open doorways that were tall enough for the look I was going for, 
So I ended up using pillars and spandrels to get the open, open hallway that I was really going for. And I hadn't used those pillars on the end with the pink in them. And I seldom use pink in a build, but I thought that they matched the carpet rather well. And I like the look of it overall. I wish they did light up in the description for those particular pillars. I thought that it said something about them being kind of um, illuminating, but when I changed the lighting uh, of the outside, I didn't really notice any, you know, brighter illumination in the living room when it got darker, so I think that's just, you know, odd wording for the description of those. And then those were the tallest doors that I could find that I thought didn't look like they belonged you know, to a mall or some kind of shopping center. And they weren't my first pick, but I didn't want to keep using those glass doors that I'd used on the outside just because it, I thought it looked kind of weird. Normally, it would take me a, a longer time than this to figure out what kind of swatches on the walls I would want to use for the interior of the build, but this one was a little simpler to find. If it takes a long time, usually I just stop recording until I get it the way I want it to look because I can be really picky, and even when I'm towards the end of a build, sometimes I might change it up entirely. But this one I found a little simpler than previous builds as far as the walls that I wanted to use. Now, as far as tile goes, I really wish that we had some kind of backsplash add-on that we could put there because I like a lot of the swatches that we get, but I don't like the tile that goes with them or I want, you know, tile in a specific spot. But, you know, a full wall of tile I think is better than me trying to use a swatch that I just don't really care for, that I also don't think matches the rest of the build. And those big wide panels that I think are from Spa Day, I think those turned out really well as far as the look I was trying to get to. You'll notice here that I go through a lot of picking and choosing of color swatches and I find that the kitchen is the most difficult for me as far as picking you know, counters and cabinets and then the color swatches that I want to go with the rest of the kitchen. I never really have a, a set plan for how I want uh, the kitchen to look so there is a lot of me playing around with it and I think islands are the most difficult for me as far as placing them because I'm never sure if I even want an island and if I make a big kitchen, I feel that it really needs one because that's a lot of open dead space. And then comes the process of trying to get the island to look well. And I really liked the little round section in the corner of the island. I don't get to use that very often, but I thought it went um, nicely in this kitchen just because it's got a bit of an odd shape as far as the counters against the wall. And the little L-shaped island just fit in there kind of perfectly. I wish that trash can, on the other hand, came in different colorways. I'm not really thrilled with, you know, the kind of spacey look to it, so I don't use it very often, but I thought it went well with this particular house. Here I'm trying to put some finishing touches. Uh, I think a couple things were, you know, shifted around, um, so I always try to edit a little bit uh, before I post it. And here we go as far as the outside. I like how it turned out and I hope you guys did too. Uh, leave a comment in the description if you guys like modern houses or if you prefer something a little more traditional. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!